Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make some festive tableware for your Memorial Day, Fourth of July, or Labor Day barbecue using supplies from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. We're going to make this great silverware napkin caddy. You can actually make a bunch of these to store your um, ketchup and dressings and other condiments that you want to have out at your barbecue. And I'm also going to show you the solution for keeping your paper plates from blowing around in the breeze. Now let's go to the table and I'll show you how easy it is to make these. The first thing we're going to do is stencil our box. They come in white and that's perfect because it'll let our spray ink show up really well and I'll put a link in the video description um, to the recipe for my spray ink and I did use Paper Mart bottles and sprayers for this and I've been using them for years and they haven't clogged, they've been wonderful. So what I'm going to do is just gently spray over this and I'm not going to worry too much about overspray. The part that I'm hitting right now is what's really going to show. And then I am going to move my stencil, just lift it up gently, and that's, isn't that cool? I want to get um, the edges here, but I'm not going to be too fussy about it. Get the end over here. You will see this on the end of the box, like right there, it'll be the little end. And then I want to get the edges, and I'm not going to worry about drips because I think it kind of has a really cool Americana look. This stencil is from um, Oriental Trading, but you could use whatever. Actually, I really like that. I'm really going to give it some more flicks there. But you could use um, any sort of star stencil, or you could even stick like star stickers all over it and um, spray it and then peel up the stickers. There. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to wipe it down because it is a uh, water-based ink. If I go and use this again and I don't clean this, it will leave, um, it'll like reconstitute that ink and it will get on whatever project I'm working on next. So I'm going to clean this and we're going to let this dry and then we're going to fold the box up in just a minute. While that's drying, I just set it outside in the sun to make it a little bit quicker. I'm going to make some burlap ribbon and these are scraps from um, the fabric burlap that I get from Paper Mart. I just find the fabric to be super um, useful and versatile so by buying the fabric I don't need to get burlap ribbon as well. I can just use the fabric. So I want to make some strips that are about, I would say, two inches wide. Well, let's take a look at our ribbon actually. I want my burlap to be a little bit wider than my ri ribbon so Let's, let's see, the ribbon is about an inch and a half. Um, let's go just shy of three inches on the burlap. So we have plenty of room for like fraying and just so it can peek out on either side of the, uh, the ribbon. Cause we're going to wrap both of them around our little, um, little thing there, our, our cool box, our silverware box. I am going to ravel the edges just by pulling out some of the, um, pulling about, out about two of the um, kind of warp strings or the weave. I'm, I'm never sure which is the warp and which is the weave, but I'm going to pull out a couple strands from each side and fray it up. And I'm doing that to both pieces because my scraps weren't quite long enough, I don't think, to reach around the whole box. So I just want to make sure I have enough to complete my project when my box is all dry. So go ahead and do that for both pieces or one long piece, or you can just buy the ribbon that's already looks like this, whatever floats your boat. All right, we're back with our box. I'm going to show you how to put this together. What you do is you first take out these corner pieces. Those are your dividers. We're not going to use all the dividers today, but um, you do get four, so it makes five little compartments in there. And, you know, these are really quick and easy to make, so you might want to make a few of these and have one for, like, condiments at your barbecue. The one I'm making right now will be for uh, silverware. Um, make as many as you need for your occasion. You do get a box of 50, I think, when you order these, so it's really, really um, economical. Um, so what I'm doing is folding in these end flaps. So I fold up one side and pull in the end flaps. I also want to poke out these little guys here. I always forget that part. Poke out the little, little cardboard pieces. Okay, then fold your flaps in. And then you're going to fold the sides up around. The, everything is uh, scored, so it's pretty easy. And if you didn't have the spray ink or if you wanted a bolder look, you could always use acrylic paint and a sponge. It's just going to take a little bit longer, and I wanted this to be kind of a fast uh, project. And then you can put your dividers in. I should have sprayed the dividers too. That would have been that would have been cool. Um, I think I'm just going to use I think I'll use two dividers and keep the center area open for napkins. I think that'll work. And then to decorate this, what I want to do is grab our um, fabric, 
that we just um, tore. Oh my goodness, it's almost it's almost long enough too. Look at that. Um, and you know what? Let's make it end. Let's have it so it ends on the end here. It'll just be a little bit easier to disguise, I think. Give it a little dab of glue. Be careful because this is a open mesh type product, so you want to hold the fabric on either side of where you put the glue on. All right. Um, I don't. You're not going to need to glue the whole thing around because when we put our um, patriotic ribbon on top there'll be glue on it and it will seep through those holes and it will attach really well so um, so don't worry about that a little bit there um, sometimes I just grab whatever I've handy to help me hold down a spot that I've put a hot glue on and I'm gonna grab just another piece that I can that I can fill in the gap with and I'll save the rest for some other project because I just like it. I, I just think it has such a, it's such, we have a natural element like that. It's such a, um, it's so nice to work with. And actually, I think I'll start my ribbon here because that way I can kind of use the ribbon to kind of hold that in place. So this is the inch and a half um, American flag ribbon from Paper Mart. We're going to put that around. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to have my seam. I don't want it to be too weak there on the end, so I think I'll just have the seam on the edge there. So I am going to I am going to put a little more glue down for the ribbon because it's also going to make sure that everything's held fast here. Oh, that's pretty. I like this. I like to have different shades of color, different layers. I think it really makes um, things look finished when you have um, different shades of the same color and you have layers going on and I like that kind of rustic primitive look oops I got a little glue there might have to put a button there or something <laughs> I don't know how that happened oh it's coming right up there we go Going right around with this remember just a little bit of glue so it can seep down through the holes you could also use like um use like thick and tacky glue if you wanted to and if you use tacky glue um you might want to have like a couple clothes pins or binder clips or something handy just to um kind of clip on there and hold it down while it dries so you don't have to kind of sit around and wait a long time now for ending this off i'm going to cut it a little long just like an, i'm going to give myself like an uh, inch half an inch to an inch seam allowance and i am just going to fold it like that and glue that down so I don't have to worry about this fraying. I don't know if it would, it's a, it's a woven ribbon, but I'd rather just be safe and have it nice and neat and then it can be used next year, which is good. Or, you know, you can use it for Memorial Day, use it for 4th of July, use it on Labor Day, you know, your summer your summer barbecues. It's, it'll be nice. And look, it's simple and it's so easy and it looks fantastic. So I'm just gonna throw in some plastic utensils because, you know, it's, I'm not fancy. That's what I have at my barbecues. <laughs> Veggie burgers and plastic utensils. That's probably why I don't have many people at my barbecues. <laughs> there we go. Throw those spoons in there. And we'll put some napkins in the middle. And actually, there's plenty of room. You can hold quite a bit of napkins in there. And, of course, you know, make, make one to carry salad dressing and... Um, you know, your ketchup and mustard and relish and all that stuff. I mean, gee, I could fit another, that same amount in there again. That'll be great. I think I'll put this out on my kitchen table for uh, for the season. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you was um, a great way to store and keep your, um, your paper plates, plastic plates, if you're having a cookout. And these are really sturdy baskets, actually. They're uh, wire and raffia, and they're extremely rugged. So I can't even bend this. So you know it's going to really hold fast. And it will hold a big plate like that, big these big ones that are nice for barbecues, because you want the larger area, and you want something thick that's not going to leak. So it will hold these bigger plates. They're divided. Or it will hold just your standard size paper plates there. And then I thought, well, we don't want things to blow away when we're outside barbecuing. So I thought uh, just a simple festive solution would be to take this ribbon and just wrap it around. Let me make sure I cut off enough here. And then we can just simply thread it right through the handle. I'm going to pull a little bit more back on this side. We can tie it in a festive bow. 
And then people can just slide out their plate as they need it. And now we're going to fuss it. We're going to fluff it and fuss it up a bit. There we go. I'm going to try to do another loop on those bows. I think we have enough ribbon here. Might as well. Don't want to waste it. Let's see if we can do another bow. Hey, that doesn't look too bad, actually. Let's see. I always feel like I have the wrong side of the ribbon up whenever I'm doing a bow. <laughs> I need my bow tool. All right. Oh, I think this will be all right. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? And this ribbon can be reused, which is nice. So afterwards, you know, providing nobody gets any gross gunk on it, you can reuse it. There we go. Okay, I'm not obviously going to teach anybody how to tie a bow here, but you know what? This this would go, I would be fine with this on my barbecue table. I'm just going to notch, notch the ends there. Hey, why not? There we go. Well, there you have it. Two really simple but useful ideas that you can use on your barbecue all summer long. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. Packaging for less. Happy crafting!